Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the start of the long-awaited ILR application videos. In today's video we are going to go through the actual application. We applied for my husband back in August and it does take me quite a while to film these videos just because I do have to hide all the information that we entered. But it's here now, I'll do a separate video on what the fees are for the application, booking in the biometrics appointment, the supporting documents and what we included in each of the categories. But if you want to know how to make the application please keep watching. As always I just want to put a disclaimer out there I am not a professional and this is not advice this is just what we did for my husband's application. So we've got the Google website open here and in the search engine I'm just going to type in UK spouse visa ILR application form and then it's going to bring up the government website. So I'm just going to click on the second link down where it says indefinite leave to remain if you have family in the UK. And then we're going to scroll down all the way to how to apply. Of course you can read any of the information that you need to on here but I'm just going to scroll all the way down. And then once you get to the apply online section it will be for the five or two year route or the 10 year route. So most people are on the 5 year route unless you've been told that you are on one of the others. So I'm going to click on the 5 year route which is the one that applies to us. And then again there is further information on this page on what to do before your application. I'm just going to scroll down all the way to the bottom and click on apply now. So this is the first question that it asks you on the application and it says, are you currently living in the UK? Of course, for the ILR application, the applicant would be in the UK. So we've gone with yes here and save and continue. The next question asks, do you currently have an application with the Home Office for leave to remain for which you have not yet received a decision? We've not got any at the moment. This is the application that we're going to put in. So I'm going to click no here. The next question asks, is your current entry clearance or leave to remain remain as the partner of one of the following. Um, as is yes here because I am a British citizen and I am my husband's partner. And then it asks, were you originally granted leave on the basis of an application made before 9th July 2012 as a partner on the family route? So it's no for us because we made our application in 2018. And then we just need to register an email. So we're going to scroll down and put in an email address that you would like any emails to go to from the government regarding the visa application. And then you also need to scroll down and create a password as well. So I'm just going to do that now. And as you can see, it says on there, it needs to contain an uppercase letter, lowercase letter, a number and a symbol. And then once you've done that, you can save and continue. And then it says they have sent a verification email and that you must verify the email before you can submit the application. So we're going to continue on to the next page. And now it's asking who this email belongs to. So for us, it's the applicant's email, but it can be of an immigration solicitor or someone else like the sponsor, maybe. And then you want to save and continue. Then it's asking if you've got an immigration advisor based in the UK. So again, this could be a solicitor. For us, we don't have one. So I've clicked no here. And then it's asking, in which category are you applying for indefinite leave to remain? So I'm going to pick a partner of a person present and settled in the UK on the five-year route. And then I'm going to confirm that we're going to provide the declaration signed by the partner, which is myself. And you'll get an opportunity to print that later on in the form. And then it's saying you must include all reasons for wanting to stay in the UK on this application. And it goes on to say that if you want to provide that information later instead of now, that you could be refused an appeal. It just asks for you to tick the box to say that you understand that you must provide all reasons wanting to stay in the UK on the application and that you will do so. There is no other option here. We must agree to that. Tick the box and save and continue. And then it asks you to check your answers. If there is anything that you're wanting to change, you can see that there is a change link that you can click on and you can change any of the answers that you need to. So once you're happy with everything, you just press continue and now it's going to ask questions about the applicant. So as you can see here, it is called the set M form and you can see that the application hasn't been started yet. Also, you can see the tabs at the top. It says start, which we've just done, application and then finance, documents, declaration, pay and further actions. So this will just take you through each of the steps. We're just going to click on answer questions about the applicant. So first of all, it's asking for the applicant's name. 
We're just going to pop a title in there, whether it's Mr. or Mrs., applicant's first name or names if there's more than one, and then applicant's surname as well. Save and continue. And then if we scroll down, it's asking for any other names that the applicant might be known by. So if this is female, they may have changed their surname from their maiden name. So you can tick yes if that's the case. But for my husband, he's not changed his name. The next question is asking if they can use the email address to contact you. So yeah, of course, we've provided this email to receive contacts. So we're going to click yes here. And then moving on, it's asking for the telephone number for the applicant. I'm just going to pop that in. And it asks, where do you use this telephone number? Use for whilst it's in the UK, which is what we've clicked on. You can also use it if you're out of the UK, but we usually tend to get another SIM card if we're out of the UK. And save and continue. And then the next question is asking for a postal address. So we can enter a postcode here and then click find a UK address. And then you can go through and select the correct one. Make sure it's all filled out correctly. Then it says, is this where you live? So we do, we live here. And it asks, when did you start living at this address? If the applicant's been living at this address since they came here, then I would put the date that they arrived in the UK. And then it's asking for the gender and relationship status. So I've gone with male because it's for my husband and he is married. And then it's asking for the applicant's country of nationality, country of birth, place of birth and date of birth. So of course that is individual to each of you, but I'm just going to put the ones in that relate to us. All this information can be found on the passport as well. And I would make sure to keep the passport close by just so you can double check everything and make sure that you're entering everything correctly. And then the next page is asking if the applicant has a valid passport. Yes, so my husband does have a valid passport. We actually had to renew it. So that's definitely valid. I'm just going to pop the passport number into the first box. And then it's asking for the issuing authority. Issuing date. Expiry date. And then it wants you to tick the box to confirm that you can provide the passport. And then it's wanting to know if the applicant has a identity card from the country of nationality. My husband does have an ID card from Bangladesh, so we did say yes to this. And then it wants you to put in some information about that ID card, the card number, the issuing authority, the issue date and expiry date. So I did put all that information in. But honestly, if you don't have it or you've lost it or something, I don't think it's very important and I wouldn't bother putting it in. And then it's asking if the applicant holds any other nationalities. So we've put no here. And then on the next page, it asks, do you have any family in your country of birth, nationality, or any other country where you have lived for more than five years? So my husband's only lived in Bangladesh and he's obviously lived there more than five years. So I am going to put his dad's details in here because his dad does still live out there. And then once that's done, it's asking if the applicant has any friends in the country of birth, nationality, or any other country where they have lived for more than five years. Again, my husband's lived in Bangladesh for a big chunk of his life so he's obviously going to have friends there. I'm going to put down the name of a couple of friends here and then move on to the next question. Are you part of any social groups or do you have any other cultural ties in your country of birth, nationality or any other country where you have lived for more than five years? So my husband's been living in the UK for the past five years. So any other social groups that he's been in, he's not been part of anymore. So I'm going to tick no here and then I'm going to explain the reason why. It then goes on to ask if you've ever had a biometric residence permit for the UK and of course we've had two so far so I'm going to click yes here and move on. 
And then it's asking if you are able to provide a biometric residence permit card in this application. Of course, my husband still has the biometric card that he got from the further leave to remain application. So that's the one that we can provide. And then it's asking us to enter the number. You can find the number at the top corner of the card. So you just need to enter that number into the box. And the next question is, do you have any home office reference numbers? And for this, I did click yes, because we've made two applications before already. So the entry one and also the further leave to remain one. And we've got reference numbers for both of those. So I did click yes here and I was able to add both numbers in the boxes. So that's what I've done. Again, I really wouldn't worry if you don't have those to hand and if you can't provide them. I don't even think it's necessary, but I just thought, seeing as I still had them, I would enter them. And then they want to know what the applicant's current national insurance number is. So this is if the applicant has ever had work and is paying taxes. It's usually on the pay slip or on a P60. It might be on a letter that you've received from HMRC. So you can have a look back at your letters. And my husband is working, so it was pretty easy to find on his wage slips. But of course, not everyone has had to work. The sponsor has worked. So if the applicant doesn't have a national insurance number, you can tick the box and then say, and continue. Then they want to know if the applicant has passed the life in the UK test. My husband has. So this is a requirement for the indefinite leave to remain application. And then they want you to enter the unique reference number. So this can be found in the email that they give you once you pass the test. So I've just gone on to my husband's emails and got the number for him. And once you've done that, it asks if you have a degree that was taught in English. My husband doesn't, so we tick no for that box. And then it asks if the applicant has passed an approved English language test. We ticked yes here. And then it says, did the test assess your speaking and listening skills at a level equivalent to CEFR B1 or higher? This is referring to the IELTS B1 test. You do need to take the B1 for the ILR application. My husband did his B1 early. He did it for his last application. And that's the certificate that we're going to be using here. So again, we ticked yes here. And then it asks, how did you get your result certificate or online reference number. My husband has a certificate so that's the one we chose and then save and continue. And then it asks what languages do you speak fluently? For my husband this is Bengali so that's what we put in the box. I wouldn't really say that he speaks English fluently. He speaks well, he doesn't speak fluently so I didn't bother to put English in there. I'm just going to move on to the next question. How long have you lived in the UK? So you need to look back at when your spouse first arrived in the UK and calculate how many months that is now that you're making the application. Since started living in the UK, have you spent any time outside the UK? And this is for any holidays that are more than two weeks. Where did you spend time outside the UK for more than two weeks? When did you leave the UK? When did you return to the UK? What was the reason for the time spent outside the UK? Your reasons may be different to ours and that's why I have blocked off the reasons that we've put. Save and continue. Any other time spent outside the UK? So that's no for us. And then it's wanting to know the applicant's immigration history, if they've ever been refused any visas or any entry in any way, if they've been deported, removed from the UK, banned from entry, that sort of stuff. My husband's never been to the UK before the application and it's the only visa application that he's ever applied for, so that doesn't relate to him. Any convictions and other penalties? None of this is relevant to us. We're going to click no. War crimes, no. It does give you some information there that you can read and then it, asks, it does ask you to agree to um, having read them. Terrorist activities, organisations and abuse. Um, but it's the same for all applications so I'm just going to click no, no, no and say that I've read them. Extremist organisations and views, again this is all no for us. 
Person of good character. So again, all of this is no's for us. Just make sure you are reading them before you're choosing. And then we move on to your current partner. So this is asking questions about the spouse, about the sponsor. So I'm the sponsor and spouse here. So all this is my information that I'm going to put in. I'm a missus and I need to put my full first name and a surname. And then it's asking if your partner has ever been known by any other name. I have. I had my maiden name, so I clicked yes. And then I gave those details here. And then if I've known by any other name other than that, which I haven't, Partner's gender here, so I'm female. And then it wants to know my date of birth, country of nationality. So I'm going to pop those in here. Just make sure it's relevant to the sponsor in your application. And then it wants to know your partner's basis for living in the UK. So I'm a British citizen and I've been in the UK from birth. I'm going to scroll down and it's asking for evidence of settled status in the UK. So I've just ticked yes here. Of course, the passport is evidence. I'm going to provide a birth certificate as evidence. But if you want to read the information on things that you can provide, then have a look at that. If the sponsor doesn't have a travel document, it does say that you can provide three years worth of documents to prove that they are a resident of the UK. And then it asks if your partner has previously been sponsored as a partner of a settled person. This is known for us just because I'm a British citizen, but if your sponsor has come to the UK on a settlement visa, then tick yes. What is your partner's current national insurance number? So I'm just going to pop my um, insurance number in here and then save and continue. Languages your partner speaks. What does your partner speak fluently? So I'm going to pop both English and Bengali into this because I do speak them both and I speak them both fluently. And then it's asking what languages do you and your partner use to communicate with each other? So I've put Bengali and English here. You are supposed to put them as two separate entries where it says add another language. It doesn't matter. It's done now. We're going to move on to when you met your partner. When did you first meet your current partner? So you just need to enter whatever dates are relevant to you and your partner. And then it asks, when did your relationship begin? And here I put in our marriage date because officially that is when our relationship was recognised. Then it asks if you and your partner are related, select whichever one applies to you and move on to the next page. Are you and your partner married or in a civil partnership? So we are married. Were you married or in a civil partnership when you were last granted leave in this category? So I'm going to click yes here because it was the further leave to remain application and we were married. And then it wants to know when did you marry or enter into a civil partnership? So it wants to know the date you were married, where you got married, the city and the country. What type of ceremony it was. If you both attended the wedding and if it was an arranged marriage. What age were you when you entered a marriage or civil partnership with your partner? And it's asking what age your partner was at the time of the marriage or civil partnership. They then want to know if you and your partner have any children together. Of course, we've got our little boy now, so we do. Do you have any children whose parent is not your partner? So me and my husband don't have any children outside of our marriage. So it's no for the other two. But of course, you need to pick what's relevant to your family. Do you and your partner currently live together? Yes, we do. When did you start living together? 
So here I'm going to put the date that my husband first came to the UK because we started living together from then really. Do you and your partner intend to continue living together in the UK? Yes, we do plan to live together. How long has your partner lived in the UK? This is asking questions about the sponsor. These are questions about me. I've lived here my whole life, so I'm just going to put in however old I am now. Um, and it's asking, what is your partner's UK address? So again, it's the same address that we put in for my husband. How long has your partner lived at this address? And again, it's the same length of time, seen as we've moved now. If I was still at my parents' house, that would be a much longer date. Is this your partner's main residence? Um, and it is for us. So the next question is, have you lived with your partner permanently in the UK since being granted temporary leave as a partner? So yeah, me and my husband have lived together ever since he came to the UK, so I'm going to say yes, but of course, pick whichever is relevant to you here. Where have you lived with your partner in the past two years? So we're just going to pop in the address that we've been in. So this is the address for our new home, and we've been living here for the last three years. Um, and then the date, they want to know when the date you lived there from. And if it's the applicant and sponsor's current address, which it is in our case. Do you need to add any additional addresses covering the past two years? We don't, so I tick to no here. Could you and your partner live together outside the UK if necessary? So we've selected no here and I've given a little reason of why it's a no. Our reasons will be different to yours, so I haven't shown it what our reasons are here. You need to provide your own reasons. And then once you've done that, just save and continue onto the next page. And then it asks, do you or your partner have any physical or mental conditions which require at-home personal care or medical assistance? It's no for us. Do you or your partner have any learning disabilities? We don't. Are you currently married or in a civil partnership with another person? This is referring to the applicant. Have you previously been married or in a civil partnership? It's no for us. And then they want you to check your answers for this section. So go through it, just make sure that everything is correct. To make a change, you just need to click on the link on the left where it says change and you can do it for that section. And then once you are happy with everything, you just need to click continue to move on with the rest of the application. As you can see here, it says it's complete. It also wants to know if there are any additional applicants. We don't have any additional applicants, but I think here you can add a child to the application if your child is also from abroad. We didn't need to add another application to this. So I'm just going to continue here. And it's asking, do you or your partner currently receive any of these benefits? We don't receive any benefits, so we're going to scroll to the bottom and click no move on to the next page is your partner currently sponsoring any additional children so this is referring to the sponsor i'm not sponsoring anybody so we're going to tick no here again pick what is relevant to you and then this section will be all about the finances so it's telling you what the financial requirement is here so it's eighteen thousand six hundred still will you be able to prove that the financial requirement is met we will so we're going to move on to the next page Select income types, we're going to click employment and move on to the next page. It wants to know who we're going to add the employment income for. In this case, it's for myself. So we're going to click on my name here. Um, later on, you can add your partner's employment details if you are using a combined income. But for now, if you just choose one of your names first, and then it's asking information about the employment that you're going to use for the finances. Because we clicked on myself, I'm going to put in my job title here, the type of employment that I'm doing when my current employment began. 
if I've been employed by the same employer in the last six months, which is yes for me, and then what do they earn? Mine is not the same continuously, but it is above the financial requirements. So that's the one that I'm going to go for. In the box though, I am just going to put in my salaried employment because that is a guaranteed amount. I'm going to move on to the next one and it's asking details of the employer, what the name is, the company address, postcode, company phone number and company email address as well. So I'm just going to fill all of that in and move on to the next page. And then they've given us a list of all the documents that they want us to provide for the employment. So they want pay slips covering any period of salaried employment in the period of six months prior to the date of application. This might be different if obviously you've changed jobs in the last two months, three months. They might want more evidence, but I think this is related to me and the information that I've provided specifically. They might be a little bit different for you. But just have a read through because this is a great way of knowing what you need to provide. They want a letter from the employer who issued the pay slips confirming the employment, gross annual salary, how long the employment has been held, the period over which the person has been on the level of salary stated in the application and the type of employment whether it's permanent or not and then they want bank statements that correspond to the same period as the wage slips. So that's all the information so we just need to tick to say that we're going to provide it all and then optionals are P60 from the current period and a signed contract. So I'm going to provide all of those and then it says, are they a director or non-executive director of a limited company based in the UK? I'm not, so I'm going to tick no, but of course, pick what's relevant to you. And the next page asks, do you want to add additional employment? So in our case, we're not going to. But if you have two jobs, then you can add it here. Or if you're doing a combined income, then you can add the other person's income to this by clicking yes. Or if you're using cash savings, you can tick yes and pick cash savings. Home details. Do you own or rent your home? I've put neither here. So my husband doesn't actually own his own home yet. It's me that owns the house. I know a lot of people have said to put I own even if it's the sponsor that owns the house, but I've just put neither own or rent. This is what I put last time and it worked out fine. And then in the description box, I just put that my wife sponsor owned the house. And then it tells you what documents they want as proof. So property of ownership, such as a mortgage statement, copy of ID documents of the owner, such as passport, and then letter signed by the owner of the property. So yeah, they were information that I provided separately as well. About your home, enter the number of rooms in your home. Any other rooms? Does anyone other than your partner and children live with you in the property? So it's no for us. Your living arrangements. Do you currently live with parents, friends or family rent free? So anyone that's living with their parents, this is an option for you to put yes here. Property outside the UK. Do you or any of your dependents own any property outside the UK? We don't. So that's a no for us. Business interests outside the UK. Do you or any of your dependents have any business interests outside the UK? Again, just pick what's relevant to you and then it asks you to check your answers. So again, please check these carefully and change anything that you need to using the change link on the side. And then when you are happy with everything, just press continue and it will move on to the next section. So this section is all about documents and it's asking if you have any other reasons for wanting to stay in the UK. I chose that we do have other reasons. I put those reasons in the box provided but if you don't have any other reasons you can select that you don't have any others. I have hidden what we've put in because I do know that your reasons will be different to ours and I don't want everyone just to copy everything that I've put in. And then when you are happy with everything that you've written you just want to save and continue onto the next page. And then this page tells you all the mandatory documents that you need. And then as you can see, it's asking for the applicant's passport, a declaration signed by the partner. And you can click on the link where it says your partner's relationship declaration. And that will take you to the declaration that needs to be signed and provided as part of the mandatory documents. So I've clicked on it here and I'm going to print it. I actually physically signed this and then re-scanned it back in. But if you've got an e-signature, I'm sure that's fine as well. Now I'm going to scroll down to other documents 
and it wants evidence of the test certificate for English language, so that's the B1 form, documents supporting any other reasons to stay in the UK, evidence of the sponsor's settlement status, and then it's asking for six letters and other documents addressed to you or your partner at the same address to show that you have been living together during the past 2.5 years. So this is basically the correspondence letters. So as you can see, it's wanting six in the applicant's name, six in the sponsor's name. If you have any in joint names, then you can provide that as one of your six. Um, I hope that makes sense. Me and my husband don't have anything in joint names, so it was just easier, six of each. But I'll go into more detail with that when I make my supporting documents videos. They also want proof of ownership of the property, copy of ID documents of the owner, all previous passports, travel documents or national ID cards that you have used to travel or remain in the UK, current biometric residence permit for the applicant, signed contract of employment for anyone that's actually showing their employment, bank statements that correspond to the same period as the wage slips, pay slips covering the last six months, a letter from the employer, P60, and then it goes on to say that you can provide originals or copies of your documents. Any passports must be original copies and that you can upload them on, on their partner's website, which is UK VCAS, but it will direct you to that website at the end of the application. Or if you want to pay a fee, you can get them scanned at the biometrics appointment and that you can book an appointment at the end of the application. And then it goes on to say that you don't need to physically send in any documents. That used to be an old way of doing it. I had to do that for my husband's first application back in 2018 but it's not really a thing anymore and then it says that you may be rejected if you fail to provide any mandatory documents so please have a look at everything that you are providing and make sure that you are providing everything that is needed for the application and like I said I'll make a separate video on the supporting documents and I'll tell you exactly what is mandatory and what is optional um, so yeah so we're just going to save and continue and move on to the next page and it wants you to check your answers again. Once you've done that, you just want to continue onto the next page. And then there is a lot of information here on what happens if you don't qualify for settlement. So you do need to read through that as well. And then it asks you to confirm that you have read through it. And then here I'm actually going to return to this application later. I've done most of it. We now need to pay. We started this application quite early on. So I didn't want to pay yet because once you pay, I think it's all submitted and you can't change any of your answers. So I just wanted to give ourselves um, a bit more time until we are closer to our renewal date and you can do this whenever you want to throughout the whole application you can always return back to the application later and then it just says there that the application has been saved and it says to use the link below to return to the application so I'm going to ask for this to be emailed to me so once I click that it says email send to the email address that we provided earlier and then I'm going to sign out so that is it guys this is where I'm going to leave the video for today the next video will show you how to complete complete the application, how to pay for it and also to book the biometrics appointment and then like I said I'll make separate videos on uploading the documents and what documents I provided for each section. I hope you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up if you did, leave any comments down below if you need to ask me any questions, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time. Take care, bye!